Okay, we'll continue uh, with talking about continuity. This is chapter 1.4a, uh, notes on continuity and one-sided limits. So one-sided limits, first of all, uh, it describes the function's behavior from the left or the right side of, uh, um, of an x value for a graph. Now we talked about limits, and in order for a limit to exist, both sides, both branches, uh, leading up to uh, uh, the target x value, uh, both branches have to arrive at the same y value in order for a limit to exist. Um, however, we're, uh, for one side of limits, we're only going to be looking kind of, or considering the behavior of one of the uh, branches at a time. Okay, so for instance, uh, example one, we have a piecewise function here, y equals x squared, where x is greater than or equal to one. Okay. And we also have y equals x plus 3, and that's going to be the linear function uh, to the left of 1. So for A, if we want to find the one-sided limit, uh, limit as x approaches 1 from the left side of 1, then that's going to be equal to 4. So whenever you see uh, this notation with the negative that is uh, sitting up as an exponent, that means we're approaching this x value from the left side of this x value. So that means we're talking about this branch here. So our target x value is here, but we're approaching 1 from the left side of 1. So if we're approaching 1 from the left side of 1, we see the y value is getting closer and closer to 4. So we can say that the limit, or the y value that the graph approaches, from the left side of x equals 1 is 4. Okay, so in similar fashion, a uh, right-handed limit would be looking uh, or approaching uh, the graph, uh, approaching the x value from the right side of that x value. So in this case, we're, um, if we're approaching uh, the graph or approaching uh, the x value of 1 from the right side of 1, and if we just follow the graph, we see that the y value is approaching uh, y value of 1. So we say that the limit or that the graph approaches from the right side of x equals 1 is 1. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> having information about one-sided limits uh, provides us a more, um, uh, a more detailed way of describing whether the limit exists at that point. So, we can say that if the one-sided limits agree, meaning that um, limit as x approaches c from the left side of c is equal to the limit as x approaches c from the right side of c, then we can say that the limit of our function as x approaches c exists. So we can give, uh, so when the limit does not exist, what we can do is we can give specific reasons as to why the limit does not exist. So in this case, uh, the limit as x approaches 1 does not exist because we can say uh, the left-handed limit um, it does not equal to the right-handed limit, and we can give a uh, more uh, detailed reason why. One side is approaching 4, the other is approaching 1. Okay, so that takes us to the next topic of continuity. So continuity exists uh, basically if you were, if you can sketch the graph uh, without lifting your pen. Okay, um, and uh, visually we can tell whether a function is continuous or not uh, easily uh, just by seeing whether the graph is connected. Um, but we need to be able to uh, show whether a graph is continuous or not using uh, these conditions that involve limits, okay? So uh, the first uh, condition for continuity is that f of c is defined. So that means our ordered pair must exist on that graph. Okay, so for instance, uh, let's say we had a graph. Okay, here's my ordered pair. Okay, so uh, x approaches c, or at x equals c, uh, um, the ordered pair exists. Uh, the second condition for continuity is that the limit exists. So uh, as we approach c from the left side of c, uh, is that going to be equal to the graph as we approach from the right side of c? So for instance, if I had a graph that looked like this, okay, we can say that the limit exists because from the left side of c, we see the graph is approaching uh, the same y value 
as from the right side of that, uh, that C value. Okay. And now the third condition says, uh, do the first two conditions, um, uh, do they agree? Do, uh, are they equal to each other? So we've, we found the value for, um, uh, for F of C. We found the value for the limit. And now we just want to see whether they agree or not. If um, the order pair exists where the graph is connected, then we can say the limit, um, we can say that uh, because conditions one and two agree, that our function is continuous. That through that point, we have a graph um, that we can sketch without lifting our pen or pencil. Okay, so for when checking for discontinuity, uh, we step through each of the continuity conditions in order, and then we stop once we, re we reach a condition that fails. Okay. Now there are different types of discontinuity. Uh, the first type is uh, removable discontinuity. This is simply a hole in the graph. So a graph with removable discontinuity can be made continuous by filling in a single point. So here we see that the limit exists, right? But um, uh, the only thing that is preventing this graph uh, from being continuous is filling in that hole uh, with an order pair. So, um, so uh, our continuity condition is going to be the third condition that fails. So when we see that the third condition fails, okay, then we know that is uh, when we're going to have uh, removable uh, discontinuity. So this is when the limit um, does not equal to the order pair. The second and the first conditions do not agree. Okay. The second type of discontinuity is uh, the non-removable discontinuity, and this is also called the step or jump discontinuity. So this is a discontinuity uh, where the graph jumps from one connected piece of graph to the other. So there is a, um, a disconnect um, from the left, from the left uh, comparing the left branch and the right branch they don't, um, don't connect, they do not agree at the same y value. So non-removable discontinuity fails uh, the second continuity condition, which says that the limit does not exist. So um, a jump discontinuity or non-removable discontinuity um, will be where the second condition fails, where the limit as x approaches c from the left does not equal to the limit as x approaches c from the right side of c. So in this case, um, for this example, the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left side of negative 1 is 3. And the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right side of negative 1 is positive 1. So we see that um, uh, in this case, these values are not the same. So one side, since the one-sided limits do not agree, we say that the limit um, as x approaches negative 1 does not exist. All right, here are some class examples. Uh, so when using continuity condition, uh, we want to determine uh, uh, the reason why these following graphs are discontinuous. And then we're going to be categorizing each of these as removable or non-removable discontinuity. Okay, so this, for this first example, our target x value is at 5. So we just gonna step, we're just going to step through our continuity conditions. First, does the order pair exist? So f of 5 is equal to 1. So we see that order pair does exist at uh, x equals 5. So passes the first condition, f of 5 equals 1. Second condition, uh, limit, does the limit exist at 5? So we test the one side limits. x approaching 5 from the left side of 5 is equal to 2. From the right side of 5 is equal to 1. So these two conditions uh, do not agree. So we say that the limit does not exist. Okay, since the second condition uh, fails, this graph has non-removable discontinuity. Okay, uh, second example, uh, our target x value is x equals 6. f of 6, um, we're trying to find f of 6, and it's undefined. So if we're just testing for uh, uh, um, whether a function is discontinuous, we can just stop after this first condition because we've already proven 
that the uh, function is not continuous because it does not pass the first uh, condition. Okay, it does not pass the first condition. However, we want to keep going because we want to see, um, we want to be able to further categorize whether uh, removable or non-removable. So second condition, limit as x approaches 6 is equal to 3 because we see the left branch uh, uh, approaches 3 and the right, right branch also approaches the same y value. So second condition passes. But now the third condition is going to fail because the first two conditions do not agree with each other. Right? f of 6 is undefined, but the limit as x exists at 3, so these two do not agree. And now since the third condition fails, uh, we can say that this graph has remo uh, removable discontinuity. Okay, example three. Uh, first condition, f of three, uh, is our target. f of three is undefined because uh, we have vertical asymptote. Now the limit, uh, uh, as x approaches three, uh, they both approach positive infinity, but we say that the limit here does not exist because um, in order for a limit to exist, both sides of the graph has to approach the same real number y value. So in this case, even though we can say the limit is infinity, um, uh, the limit technically does not exist. Positive infinity is just um, a reason, a, a reason as to why the graph does not, why the limit does not exist. And now the second condition fails, therefore non-removable discontinuity. Okay, example four, we we're going to go through our conditions here. Our target x value is at five. f of five is equal to four, passes the first test. The second test, limit as x approaches five. So the left branch is approaching a y value of two. Um, the right branch is approaching a y value of two. They agree, so passes the second test. Third test, though, is going to fail because the order pair exists at four. The limit exists at two. They don't agree at the same y value, so third condition fails. Therefore, we have a removable discontinuity. Okay, example five, uh, find uh, the x value of discontinuity for f of x equals x squared minus three over x minus three, x squared minus nine over x minus three. Determine if removable or non-removable discontinuity. So we have our function here. What we can do is we can, dis we can figure out where the um, uh, where the holes or vertical asymptotes are. So if we factor the numerator, we get x plus three, x minus three. Now there's common factors here between numerator and denominator. X, uh, the factor of x minus three cancels out, which means that we're gonna be expecting a hole at x equals three. So if we go through our condition, we're gonna be expecting the third condition to fail. So f of three, undefined, all right, if we plug 3 into our function, we're going to get 0 over 0. Limit, however, is going to be 6 because after we, fact, after we cancel out the factors and if we plug in 3, we're going to get 6. So the limit does exist. However, the third condition requires the first and second condition to pass, to agree, sorry. In this case, they don't agree, so therefore condition 3 fails. Our function has removable discontinuity. And in order to make this continuous, we can simply replace that hole with um, the ordered pair 3, 6. And if we fill in that hole, then uh, that graph will now be continuous because uh, this graph is only one point away from being continuous because of that hole.